get to Scotland. You, you know, Scotland, um, how much, I mean, me and Stoddy have spoken about this a, a, a lot of times as well on the podcast. Um, for you being back in the international setup now, being part of Steve Clark's setup, how important, Jack, get your 50 caps? Um, how important has that been for you? I'm massive. I think I, I had a period where, uh, again, you'll know, when you start your career and you're in in most squads and stuff, you you kind of clock up the caps and you don't really pay much attention to them. And then, oh, I'm near 25, bang, you hit that wee milestone and and then it goes again. And then I, I got to kind of mid-20s and that's when I really thought, I'd love to get to 50. And again, never grew up thinking I'd ever play with Scotland. Um, and then I had I didn't get a cap for maybe 18 months, I think. Um, and probably what helped me was when McLeish came in, he took out all the older pros and tried to go with a lot of youth. And then very quickly, it showed he maybe needed a few in. And the likes of myself, Snoddy, Charlie came back into it. And we were around the squad there. So I picked up a few caps there, done well. And then there was a change again. Um, so in that, for 45 to getting over 50, I've probably found a wee niche in terms of the strikers have been quite inexperienced. And the managers wanted a bit of experience, and that's why I've stayed in around the squad, got got on uh, in the squads at the right time, played in the games, and I couldn't believe I got to fifty. If I'm honest, you've spoken about fifty caps, but get to a major finals would that be the ultimate? I'd give them all up to get to one. I honestly would. I think, fortunately enough, you see the some my biggest memories of Scotland were Euro '96 and France '98, and major tournaments, and then. You come through and no tournament after no tournament. And you're, we've been in campaigns where you've been one result has cost you massively. Um, and that's been the story of probably all our international careers. Um, so to have this chance two games away, that's personally I'll be striving because it's going to be a, probably a last chance to make it to a tournament. And what a chance it is, to be honest. No, I'll know of a better chance. We've went through it the hard times in terms of being tough to qualify. Whereas this nation's league's helped massively to get through and, and get to a tournament. Well, he won't say it, but would you love to see Robert Snoddy back in the, in the aye, Snod, for, for off-field alone, aye. <laughs> that that says it all! Are, the prank calls are tremendous. Right, that says honestly. it all! By the way, on the pitch, forget it, he's just want you back for a <laughs> No, 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 that's not what I said. But, Cheers, Newsy! Thanks, mate! That, that, that alone... Honestly, the, the prank calls have been tremendous over the years, but um, I Snoddy definitely brings things. I think Sean Fleming still playing in the Premier League right now. Um, I think the only way he's going to get it, back but... in is if he, if he kids on he pranks himself with Steve Clark. <laughs> <laughs> imagine that. Robert, imagine him phoning of himself. Yeah. Robert is yeah. Steve. You want to yeah, come that's back? a good Robert. prank in itself. Somebody else should phone him. What about the prankies, by the way? Honestly, Some I don't know what happened. James McArthur came up with six of my prank calls. So if the podcast player cards right, I will play a few of them for you, boy, <laughs> day, along the way. So shut your mouth just now and don't get any further with the pranks. I'll let you know a few Honestly, of them. Lee Griffiths. The Lee Griffiths is one of them. He's don't you done. worry about that. You've heard it, Maisie. <laughs> Thank so, you, fuck Matt. Dear Lee, how you Thank doing, you, son? Thank you, Jimmy Bullard. <laughs> I just think right now we're looking at that current squad boy day, it's um it's lacking you know a bit of leadership right now. Uh, young Robo's find his trade as captain, but right now I don't think it's me you probably um need to be asking the question. I think Scott Brown should be coming out of retirement. Um Scott Brown's a you know, he's a elite level player when it comes to somebody for leadership you've seen him in you know Scotland dominating for years um he's a terrific guy um but when I played him with Scotland he was he's a winner and there's no doubt you've seen Selic go in and dominate for you know a large part of his you know captaincy um and I think um you know Scotland needs Scotland needs somebody like Scott Brown. Um, you know, we'd, I'd love to see some, you know, somebody come right out of their shell and just, you know, take the lead for that centre midfield uh, role. Um, but when we're about the well, squad, we've seen, we, we seen him when he retired and Gordon brought him back. No, you did, but I just think when we're about the squad and, and when we're about that year, he gave us such a lift, um, massive lift. Him, um, Scott Brown um, would be a, 
you know, it'd be exceptional to see him back. So that will be a, a big one if we get um, Scott. Scott does. That's the only thing uh, missing for, for, for Bruni's and career. Is, and your banner. Well, exactly. Obviously, mine. <laughs> he needs that. He needs that in his life. But no, I think it's only... It's only that one thing he spoke about that he's you know he's missing is, is qualifying for a, a major tour. He's done everything else, so I would love to I would love to see Bruni back. I would like to see your um, Billy Gilmore's maybe coming into the squad, young Greg Taylor's um in the squad. Um I think the the, the most I must, ca- I must know, ask, how was the little mouse when he came into the squad? Greg Taylor. Because he, is, Taylor. The, is, the, he is the quietest little guy ever. Then you get to know him, and all of a sudden he's a wee chirpy, like <laughs> right in your face, annoying the life out you. Like, he's, no, um, that was his nickname, the mouse. No, he he's a um, just... he's a brilliant lad. Um, it's just one lad that I just connected with straight away. Um, and and most of the lads are like that, mm. but for him, just being a young lad coming in, you know, I, I connected with him straight away. I always wanted me to sort of do well, and it's a tough one because he's got two very. Ex- Obviously, um, top class fullbacks in, in Robo and KT, but fair play to him. He's in there. He's um, he's wanting to play. He's putting his cell in the in the frame to play. Um, he's playing with a you know top class side in Celtic now. He's um, he's got that you know that title under his belt, and he's you know he'll be flying high with confidence. But one thing I liked about him, his his attitude was brilliant. Even when he wasn't playing, he was still in the gym doing all his bits and all that stuff, trying to be a you know a good. Sort of role model for for the rest of the boys in the team, and that's all you ask when you're a national duty boy. That's I mean, a hundred percent. You're right. There's one thing that I always used to wind him up because his, his thighs were the size of my calves. It was like that. <laughs> <laughs> it had nothing. There was more. There was more <laughs> more meat in a butcher's pencil than a wee guy. But I mean, I totally. I, that's what really excited me was playing a number 10 having options run about the ball and I remember a training session boy day honestly God I remember it as if it was yesterday Gordon Stratton we trained doing at Capolo and it was it was one day you know Gordon Stratton stopped the session it was belting down by rain right stopped the session we I think the game's about 8-7 right and I'm no the joking on top. no it was unbelievable and it was just pure attacking football. It was so flowing for both sides. And he went, lads, I'll tell you what, we could have come down here. We just played the USA. I think it was on a Friday night. We could have come down here. We, we could have just, you know, it's easy, Ozzy. It was on, I think it was on a Sunday or something like that. It was belting down the rain. And the standard was unbelievable. And that's when I thought, really, at that point, we have got the players, we've got the manager, everything set up for us to you not know, really have a go at teams. And we were, he was always trying to work on uh, new things, um, playing with Scotland, <clears> always trying to get, you know, how can we get that little 1% more and we can do so? How can we excite teams? And we did, we did. We went on a great run where we were you know, beating teams who were un, undefeated. And that, that was, um, I think I was right before I, I'd done my knee. I, I loved um, under, under under that rain. It was, it was brilliant. He just went, stop session, let's go, because that's enough. That was amazing. So, I, yeah. I think you go back to that 2000 and, um, well, it was what, three three years um, on Wednesday, three years yesterday, that, um, yeah. you know, that England game. But that campaign, that was the one where you think where you thought to yourself, well, if that could have been that, it was the exact same as us. For the qualifying yeah. for the, the 2008 Euros, where we felt as if you know that was our chance. Did you feel yeah, the same? No. I did, mate. I, I genuinely felt at that point um, that we, you know, we, we we did have a great chance, um, and and we were you know we were winning games, and it was it was very you know it was frustrating that England one um, would would have been the you know it would have been nice and on the cake really the the for my Scotland career anyway in terms of you know beating them and um, the way we'd have done it. Um, it was a sickening blow, obviously. You know, the way we, we conceded in the last uh, minute. We had a chance, I think it was. I don't know, it was sure, Armstrong, we had a chance to you know, pass it or whatever, keep going with it. Um, and, you know, Griffiths produces that's, two that's of the That's the best. difference, so they see at that level. Oh, they, see, like, that, they, they, they be mistakes, you know, that pass. Because it was actually, you could have played at one side and you're in. And if you'd have went the other yeah. side, you were three and straight through. Probably 3-1 to yeah. Scotland, game over, maybe. You know, playoffs yep. for, for 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 the for the for the World Cup, but you know they're the wee the wee things that you always you always look back and say to yourself, you know what that just went against us. That's not it's right. And then how do you um? So for for me, as I've always thought about it, so it's always 
when I've been in the squad boy days, how you how do you get the lads to think it's those small things that actually matter? Do you know what I mean? Like to try and say it might be that that then is a difference for us qualifying or no. So when I was running about the squad towards then, it was it was more trying to you know convince the lads that you know you are you are very good players, but we must believe in ourselves as a team because that's one thing I touch on there about um you know you speak about number nines and you know I don't think we've seen the best of Ollie Burnley. The Ollie McBurnley I've seen at Sheffield United, boy, they um, had a great game against us. Like target man putting his cell about. I think you, you know, Ollie McBurnley needs a needs a goal. Needs needs you know needs that yeah, those goals at the back of the net when he turns up and plays with Scotland. He needs to be the main man. But that's the problem. You've got everybody wants to be that number nine and be the top striker. I just think that we, we need to you know we need to figure out a a formation and a and a partnership that that suits everybody and suits the team. Um, and you could get right through the, the squad, even the midfield area, full backs and, and stuff. But we'll leave that for we'll leave that for another. What would you say, your, your, uh, when you look over your eighty caps? What's what's the highlight of you in that that Scotland jersey? Well, listen, captain of my country, a young age, and big games and great memories at hand, and being part of a great group of different groups and bunches of lads. You know, there's loads of positives to take from it. Although the goal was always to to qualify for that major tournament that I didn't manage to do. You can't look back at some of the great games I was part of, being captain, winning performances, winning matches, walking out with the front with their captain's armband, 52,000 in Hamden with a bunch of great lads behind you, winning a game. There was no better feeling and I, and I loved every moment of it and just a shame that it didn't result in you know, qualifying because I think we definitely had opportunities to do it and we were so lucky on a number of occasions unfortunate weren't good enough other times as well you got to accept that but I definitely think we weren't good enough and we're just unlucky a couple of times Was there any stage flights where you felt as if we're really close here you know we, we are so close if we just keep pushing what, what what sort of stage through your 80 caps where you say to yourself you know I think you know, I think we've got the uh, the right players to do it and, do, and, and sort of compare it on the level of what the lads are at now See, but Stoddy, oh. see on that, I'll answer, it's not, uh, Fletch, sorry, if I got, see oh. on the bus that day when we were going to Hamden, with it, with it, when we were playing Italy, yeah. we actually thought we were going, to, that's how far we had came as a group, oh, we actually aye. thought we were turning up there to win. And we battered them on the day as well. Yeah. First, they score first minute and last minute, and we battered them for the 90 minutes. That's the closest, because of the, that's the closest and the most I felt in the Scotland team. The closest and the best I felt was under Walter Smith for Scotland um, and the team we played in Boydie under Walter Smith. I felt like if Walter had stayed manager, we'd have definitely qualified for a major tournament because of the spirit and the quality of the players we had and and the manager we had and everything at that time just felt like, yeah, we're on the we're on the verge of, of go, going somewhere here because of how well we were playing and how just everything about it, as you say, it was unbelievable. We battled. Oh, it was. I mean, even, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I go back and it's, I, I, what, 19 caps or something. I, I mean, it wasn't a thing. But when I, when I look back at that campaign there to get in and score goals and the amount of times we, I was actually, I'd done something there a week there for, for Sky and, and we're talking about, you know, like my goals. And when I started looking through my Scotland ones, you must have set up about 90% of them. Uh, well, I think the same wavelength, wavelength. It was Fletcher to Boyd. Listen, I loved playing with you because I knew where you were going to run, and I, and it was for an attacking midfielder. It was brilliant because I knew exactly where you were going to go, and I just tried to put it in an area and let you go and finish it. And that's why you're the best striker and finisher I've ever played yeah. with. <laughs> By the way, Snodge, I told you, I meant you, told you, mate. There you go, mate. I just teed them up magnificently. But <laughs> damn, honestly, unbelievable. Let me just finish with this one. So one day I was doing a thing with Boyd for his charity, and we were up on stage, and I said, tell the story about how. Boydie's got great movement and making all these runs and all that and how I love playing with him. And big Walter Smith came up after and went, I'd love to meet that fucking Chris Boyd that Darren Fletch. <laughs> Fletch. 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 Tom by the George way. Boyd. Tom yeah. Boyd. George Boyd. Fletch. <laughs> Fletch. By the way. Yeah. It, by the way, it was better than that. See when you're up in the see when you're up the stage. He's sitting at the table and I could do you know that way he had the stare? And you just yeah. felt as if he's staring at me. So he turned around and he's like, he says, there must have been two effing Chris Boyds. And I just thought, I was like, okay. But yeah. And then he comes back again. He says, there was only one thing better than your movement, son. Your lack of movement. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant, Gaffer. Thanks very much. That you know, was, it was brilliant. But um, You know, what is Israel at home? Um, and then Serbia, Norway away. Do you fancy qualifying for the Euros? Well, by the way, we've had chats about this. 
we might see Robert Snodgrass coming out of retirement if Scotland get there, he said. <laughs> I've been trying to get Snod's back. Uh, <laughs> I've been, Snod's has retired more times than anyone, I think. He's retired about four <laughs> times. So, um, no, he's gone. He's out. Yeah, he can't come back. So, um, <laughs> But, um, look, of course, look, I think I think near the back end of last year, we, we started making steps. You know, we're, we're unbeaten in the last three. And, yeah, people can question, you know, the quality of, teams we were playing against and things like that but you have to beat the teams in front of you um, and we managed that and you could see the lads kind of I think you could see Steve Clark's you know ideas and stuff starting to come through and um, you know international managers only have a week together with you and it's very hard to then get your style of play across to them quite quickly so I think we've made big steps um, now you know we've got a playoff we've, we're two games away from you know stopping a country hurting as well and um, you know, it's been too long since Scotland have been to a major tournament and um, I, I, I believe we can do it. We need to go out and do it. We need to go out and show confidence that, you know, and belief that we can win the two games. And, and if we do that and the quality that we've got in the squad can can all come together and and shine, then I, I, I've got no doubts that we can be there. Um, we're a good team on our day, but we've probably just not been consistent enough over the last couple of years. And it's about trying to be, get that consistency and trying to get the results that you need to get into these tournaments because all oh, the big nations and stuff are so good at it and, and that's where we need to get better. Um, and if we make that next step, then I believe we've got a manager and we've got the squad that um, you know can take us places and hopefully end a long, long wait for um, you know a big championship. Look, I enjoy I enjoy the pressure of being captain. I enjoy you know standing up to that. Um, you know, I think I'm doing it better and better every time I meet up, and uh, I'll grow into the captaincy. You know, there's no prouder moment than me pulling on that armband and pulling on the shirt and representing Scotland. But as a whole squad, our performances haven't been good enough, and you know, since probably the end of Strachan's era, and we need to get we need to get back to that because. You know, when I grew up, obviously, you know, you both were in the squads when even when I was watching and wasn't involved that Scotland were such a hard team to beat. No big team wanted to come to hand and you could nick a result against France. You could nick a result against Italy. We've not done that. You know, Belgium came here and had it easy at hand and, you know, we probably didn't lay a glove on them. You know, other teams have done that. Russia done it. Um, and that's what, you know, needs to, that's what we need to try and get back to because Scotland, that's what Scotland was represented by. When I watched Bruni and Darren Fletcher and all these players, and and we need to try and get back to that because Scotland was a hard team to beat, um, and that's what we need to get back to. Give me your favourite story about Roberto Snodcast. You must have some. You have played them. <laughs> how Scotland? You must have some crackers in there. Ah, oh, there's there's honestly there's so there's so many. I think. Um, We've had a we've had a lot of good times to be fair. Um, if you're bu- if you're bumping into somebody and they turn around and you say, "Listen, tell me the funniest was, thing that Snoddy give us a for you for you because you'll know this man Frank Francis Riley of the SFA. You know Big Frank, huh? And um, we were in Mar Hall and we are we are we are walking for food, and uh, no one else in this world other than Robert Snodcast, as we like to call him on this, would jump into laundry. <laughs> Uh, with one of the wheelie laundry things and say, video this, video this, right? So I'm like, what is he playing at? So I'm I'm stuck behind a door like that with my phone out like that and and all I've heard is Frank walking down the corridor, talking loudly, sneezing as loud as he can as usual. And um, he's he's literally, he's literally walked by Snods and Snods has jumped out the laundry thing and he's like, ah! And honestly, honestly, for 10, 15 for 10, 15 seconds after that, I thought Big Frank could have a heart attack here. He's not yeah. the youngest. He's 60 or whatever, late yeah. 50s, yeah. early 60s. I thought, Big Frank, we could be getting an A&E here. We could be getting Frank an ambulance. And, he uh, did nearly die, didn't he? Oh, he nearly... Uh, to be fair, you would have been getting more than an A&E. <laughs> you'd have got a 10-year stretch. <laughs> oh, honestly, and I, I had, I had it all Frank. perfectly. I had it all perfectly on camera. Um, I think we still watch to this day. Frank was buzzing off it after after he recovered. He was buzzing off it. He was sending it to all his mates and that. Oh, it was hilarious. It was. We've had, Love it. We've Love had it. many. We've had many good stories, but that one, for a Scotland point of view, is, is up there with the best. <laughs> <laughs>